Hey guys, and welcome to the first installment of Two Minute Tuesdays. In my last video, I said that you could not render out all of Sequencer's render passes with the movie render queue. It turns out that was not quite true, and I totally stand corrected. If you haven't seen that video already, you can check it out right here. Now in this video, I'll be showing you how we can render out all of Sequencer's render passes, but this time with the movie render queue. So let's put a timer down, and let's get started. With the movie render queue open, okay, I went ahead and I added my sequence right here with the big render button here. Let's go into settings. And you'll see there isn't there doesn't seem to be a way to add render passes like sequencer has right so i'm going to go to setting there just is no option for render passes the way you do it is a little bit hidden it's hidden and it's really not intuitive and it's really easy to miss if you didn't know any better you would just think it's not there and that's what i thought in my previous video but i was wrong and this is how now in the deferred rendering tab you're going to want to go ahead and see here where it says additional post-process materials you're going to hit the little plus when a little plus open, hap, opened up here, click the little arrow here, and you need to look for the pro process material, in this case, the scene depth world units. Now, if you didn't know any better, you click on this, every single material in the project showed up here. You really have to know what to look for. This is really bad user interface design on Epic's part. Why they couldn't make it the same as Sequencer, I'll never know. Now, let's go ahead and search here. Search assets for scene depths, scene depth world units. Click that, make sure you hit enable. Hit accept, and you're ready to render your scene depth world unit pass. So in your Z depth pass, if you want to add another render path, you just go ahead and do the same thing. You just add another one. So add element. I'm going to search for, uh, let's see what sequencer has here. Sequencer has, let's say I want world normal. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and search for in a none tab here, world normal. Movie render queue world normal. Click that, hit enable. And that is as simple as that. That is how you go ahead and add all the render passes that Sequencer has with the movie render queue, with the added benefit of having all the multi-sampling. Now, one thing I do stand by, however, is the quality of the Z depths pass. So in this case, the scene depth world units. So this is a claim I made in my last video. I absolutely stand by the fact that this is unusable for production. It's not very good, it's something. And we'll see why by jumping into Nuke. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept render local <clears throat> and now that this is rendering let's jump into nuke and see the result of the z depth path that we get from this even with multi-sampling all right so now that we're in nuke i went ahead and brought in the exr file that we just rendered from unreal so as you can see here i rendered a scene with no depth of field because i'm going to be applying the depth of field with the help of the of the scene depth world units that we just rendered out so i have the exr file right here i went ahead and added the z defocus node now what i what what this does is it uses the depth path that we got that's baked into the EXR layer and defocuses the scene based on that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to crank up the, 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 the value to something pretty high here. And now it's working. And you can see it's defocused everything and I get to choose the focal point here. So now the focal point is on the rear pot here. I'm going to move this focal point and bring it right here to the front pot. Now I'm going to maybe tone this down a bit. You can see this is actually pretty cool. So we have full control over the depth of field in Nuke. And this is, this is actually quite a useful way to work. I love having the freedom of controlling the amount of defocusing and the position of the defocusing in post. It's just a lot easier to work with. It's a lot faster. And this looks pretty good at first glance, right? So if I you know, move ahead and go to the next frame or something, um, this actually doesn't look too bad. But... Uh, if we take a closer look, this is where the scene, the scene depths from Unreal really begin to fall apart, and that's around the edges. So you can see here, when you go closer, we can see all these artifacts around the edges. Let's look at the, at the foliage as well. See, we get all these nasty little artifacts here, and that is because the scene depths that we get from Unreal is not... The edges just look like garbage. It's really bad. It's completely unusable. Um, this just does not look very good. So I, I, I can't use this in production. Compers are going to hate you. Uh, this is not very, this is not very good. So it's something, but in my opinion, it's not good enough to really be used properly. So we're able to get all the sequencer render passes out with multi-sampling, but scene depths, it's not quite there yet. It's not good enough for VFX work. And there you have it, folks. So thanks for so much for watching, guys. That concludes my first two-minute Tuesday. I know I've completely blasted past the two-minute mark, 
But hey, I hope you learned a little something. If you have, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It means the world to me. And I'll see you guys next week.